Hi there, I'm Clark Wolf, and this is The Big Dish. It's the show where people compete to see if their family recipe can end up on the menu of a big time Bay Area restaurant. Today's featured restaurant on Lake Merritt in Oakland is Lake Chalet. We're here with Lara Trapelli. Did I get that right? Yes, you did. The owner Perfect. of Lake Chalet. This place is beautiful. Thank you for having us. Thank you for being here. So what? when was this built, this beautiful building? In 1909. Ooh, as what? Originally, it was a pump station. Yeah. And our first dining room, right. our kitchen, and our long bar is. That's quite That's a bar. That's our pump house, right? We think it's the longest in the Bay Area. OK. And that was originally a pump house station. Beautiful. And it was built in Oakland after San Francisco's fires. Right. Oakland was concerned about what they would do. Yeah. And it operated, um, I think, up until the 60s as a pump house. And uh, how long has it been Lake Chalet? Uh, we opened in 2009. Not so, so long ago. So on the 100 year anniversary. That's fantastic. What's yeah. the food? Uh, it's a seafood bar and grill. Sounds so perfect. So with American focus, uh, innovations, always fresh, focus on our local bounty. We've got a lot. So who comes to Lake Chile? Uh, well, we have a great local customer base. It's really wonderful here in Oakland, all over the East Bay. Um, Oakland has also recently become a bit more of a tourist attraction. Yes. Uh, so we have visitors from all over. We have guests coming over from San Francisco, which we think is very exciting. We love that. And how many days a week are you open? Seven days a week. Oh, we love that. Thank you for having us. Thank you. They even have gondola rides. I mean, this is just a really nice place to be anytime, right? You guys having a good time? All right. People who don't live in the, in the area don't know what Oakland's like and don't realize that this pearl is in the middle of Oakland called Lake Chalet Restaurant. So I always bring them here. I like a lot of things about the Lake Chalet. First of all, look at this great view. Um, it shows off Oakland in a way that no other restaurant does. I like the service and I like the variety in the menu. I do love the beers, handcrafted local beers, absolutely delicious. My favorite is the uh, Lake Merritt IPA. We're here with Aaron DRC, who is the brewmaster of the restaurant. Right. How long have you been doing this? Uh, I've been brewing for the chalet for nine years. And how many kinds of beer do you brew? Uh, any one time, we'll have eight beers on tap. We wow. We rotate our, our lineup. And what's the special today? Let's take a look. Let's take a sniff. Let's All take right. a drink. Uh, well, this is our, our IPA. This is our number one selling beer. Uh, it's going to have some good hoppiness to it. Nice golden color. Really pretty, huh? Yeah. And you're pulling a beer, right? Yeah. It, right, like pulling a shot of espresso. Yeah. All right, and now you're going to tell us if it's up to snuff. Yeah. It smells great. Nice and hoppy. The it's brewmaster great. has spoken. Now, you come here for all kinds of things, but what are your favorite, what, what kind of, yeah. you know, what, what are you going for today? Today is actually the halibut. The pan roast halibut is pretty fantastic. I mean, I, I don't want to blow it too out of proportion, but melts in your mouth. It's, it's indescribable. It's the good stuff. Yeah. All right, well, let's go see. We're here in the kitchen with Chef Mike Baker, and we're going to get something to eat, aren't we? Of course. All right, what are, what are you going to cook for us? We're going to cook a pan-roasted halibut with a corn and gypsy pepper ragu. Wow. Sautéed spinach and a lemon burr fondue sauce. You know, I, I would eat that any time of the day or night, but, you know, for a lunch or a dinner, it's perfect. Perfect. How does it go? Hit it with a little vegetable stock. Great, so that it's just gonna it's gonna weld. Yes, sir. All right. Beautiful. Good. And that's a hot top and that's a burner, right? Why do you use sometimes Correct. a hot top and sometimes a burner? Uh, when you want a more direct heat, you use this. Right. Boom little, on the fish. A little more subtle heat over here. Got it. Spread out. We're going to heat up our corn ragu. That corn looks great. So it's off the it's off the cob and it's yes. got, it's got uh, uh, some onions in there. Right. Uh, gypsy peppers, uh, thyme. Which are not real uh, strong. No, right? they're pretty mild. They right. taste kind of like a bell pepper. And now we are going to sauce that fish. Good. Ooh, that's really pretty. A little of that, a little on top. Right. And then our chive oil. A little chive oil for color. Yeah, and also for a little chive taste, right? 
And are we ready to eat? Can I eat now? Can I? Yeah, okay. Oh, that looks good. That looks wonderful. I'm gonna get a little of the, uh, a little gypsy, a little spinach. Mm, mm. Oh, a little love. Delicious, chef. Thank you. Thanks. We've met the boss, we've talked to the chef, we've been through the kitchen and all parts of the restaurant. Now let's see if these contestants can cook. Right after this. Welcome back to The Big Dish. We are here at the California Culinary Academy and it's time to meet those contestants. Let's go see. My name is Leah Adams. I'm from Santa Cruz, California, born and raised. Um, I recently moved back, well I moved to Nashville, Tennessee and then moved back to Santa Cruz in with my family to help take care of my father who had three strokes during the surgery and is now in a um, pretty impaired state of consciousness. So I spend a lot of my time taking care of him and taking care of my family. I have a huge family and we've all, we all live together. We all have roles, we've, it's kind of like it takes a village, right? And we've, we've definitely um, all kind of assumed our roles and I'm the home cook. We get along at times and at times we do not. Uh, when, we, when we're getting along, I feel really proud of us. I feel like we're in this situation that's super challenging that you can't Google to find out what to do and I think it's beautiful and I'm proud of us. I moved to Nashville to get out of Santa Cruz. I had never left and just got out of a really long relationship, was at the same job for 11 years and decided it was time to fly and I landed in Nashville. A mutual friend lived there, invited me to come stay with them while I, um, while I worn my boots, so to speak. For me, food is the best way to bring people together and to meet new people, so I started working at a restaurant and within a week we had had a supper club established and that's how I met all my friends in Nashville. I was married before and I cooked a lot for my ex-husband but it wasn't until post-divorce that I actually really fell in love with cooking because I was able to cook for myself for the first time and really connect with the food as opposed to just cooking to nurture someone else. I was really cooking to nurture myself and fell in love with food all over again. And I feel like that post-domestic life really brought out this domestic side of me which is a little ironic. I'm Herlin Haras. I am from Sonoma County, California. I'm a Navy brat, a proud Navy brat, and my dad was career Navy, and I'm also a single mom to teenage girls. So because of my dad going to uh, Asia a lot with the Navy, we always, we always had Japanese food and a, you know, all kinds of Asian food, Korean barbecue and stuff at the home. I am very grateful to my mom and dad for giving me this huge, exposure to the culinary world and the world way before everybody else had it. I mean, I mean, how lucky is that? How many kids do you know were eating kimchi at five years old? The first time I made Thanksgiving dinner, I was 10. My friend Shelly Dodge and I, our moms sent us to class. They had the sellers at Macy's and we took a class there and we learned how to make pumpkin pie and turkey and roast chicken, which is kind of, that's a handy thing to know when you're 10 years old. I still make a really good roast chicken and all the fixings. And so when I was 10 years old, I made my first Thanksgiving dinner. One of my favorite things to, to do for entertaining that my friends all ask me for every year, because I'm still single, um, is my anti-Valentine's Day party. I tell the guys, if you want to woo the girls, bring the dessert. I've been all over the place. I've been to Spain, I've been to Paris, I've been to London, I've been all over the country. You can drop me in Beirut and I'll find something. I, I'll find people to meet and cook with. I'll, you know, in the, uh, the idea of a cruise doesn't sound that fun to me because they eat, they're like, oh, we, we'll eat on the ship. And I'm like, I'd rather just go find, like, you know, ask the locals or the hotel people, where do you eat? We've met the contestants, so Leah and Herlinda, it's time to go shopping. You get to go to the beautiful and delicious Canyon Market, where the produce and the meat and the fish, it's all right there, and have 60 bucks to buy whatever you need for your recipes. Are you ready? We're ready. ready. Go shopping. I need some Wix. Wix, Wix, Wix. All right. I'm gonna have my trusty iPhone list. And I'm gonna start with my arugula. 
for my arugula walnut pesto. I need about two packed cups, which is about three good-sized handfuls. I need salmon, please. You know, that coho wild salmon looks beautiful. I need about five big cloves. These look really nice and big, so first time's a charm with this one. Well, you know what? Nowadays, everything is on notes. Scrolling notes. My big dish cooking list. A nice veiny piece, so it looks pretty when I present it to the judges. I am making salmon and papillote. The uh, layman's terms of salmon and parchment paper with capers and Meyer lemon and Sonoma County white wine and butter. Um, I need a, about a pound of flank steak. Um, and I'm doing it with a little quinoa pilaf with crispy beaks. What's arugula walnut pesto without walnuts, right? I need a good cup of these, but I'm gonna do some extra for garnish. All right, I think we're ready to cook. This smells wonderful, this is perfect. I need to see if I hit the budget, because I have to keep it under $50. So let's see how I did. Let's see how I did. How am I doing now? What do you think? Got everything. I'm nervous that I'm gonna make budget $50. <laughs> okay. We're here in the kitchen of the California Culinary Academy with our contestants, Herlinda and Leah. They have been shopping at the beautiful and delicious Canyon Market, and they're ready because all of their things are on the Cambro pantry and in the refrigerator, ready for them to go. So are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Ready, set, cook. Just feeling confident and excited. I have a feeling I'm going to be making a few trips to the pantry. Perlindo, what did you get from the camera pantry and what are you cooking up today? I got some beautiful tricolor quinoa. So today I'm going to make a salmon in papillote. Papillote meaning in, oh, in parchment paper. In parchment paper, I knew that. Ooh, I see a pan full of walnuts. Pan what are you making? Walnuts. Fettuccine pasta with arugula, walnut pesto, little seared flank steak, and a blue cheese crostini on top. And I'm toasting up my nuts before I add them to the pesto to bring out some flavor. I will not make any of the obvious jokes. Okay. <laughs> I'm going back for garlic. I knew I was going to do this. <laughs> now I need to find my salmon. I know she needs garlic. I'm bringing the whole garlic. So I need to really sharp though. So as long as she stays garlic, we'll be okay. <laughs> So I'm going to be doing some smashing over here. And it's a great way to get the peel off. All right, we're ready. Things get really sandy. Got to rinse this thing. All you need is sand in the judge's food. That would not be good. I put a little underneath and a little on top. Everything cooks right in the paper. I have a cup of Parmesan, shredded Parmesan cheese. Okay, a little more. So you're making a walnut and arugula pesto, yes. right? Yes. You got the green from a pesto, and yep. instead of using pine nuts, you're using walnuts. Yes. Okay, so, so you are doing the papillote, right? Yes. Go for it. Yes. Who's hungry? In you go. So I'm gonna go grab my steak. Well, shoot, I've got time to drink some wine now. <laughs> so, Herlinda, now you're just kind of uh, <laughs> hanging out and no, drinking wine. No, and... you know what I just realized? I'm what? such a dork. I have to start so the mushrooms at least see? for my... Um, right, see, there's always my, something. You, yes, right? you, I could eat the rest of that butter. All right, I'll get out of the way. I'll, I'll check back in a minute. It is dangerous over here. Okay, I'm going to brown those up a little bit. I wonder if this is why they call it a rub. All right, so we're uh, heading into the last 30 minutes. You're only 15 minutes in, but uh, things are coming along all right? Pretty good. You remember the other stuff you were gonna cut? <laughs> 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 and you have everything under control. I was feeling really hot, so I wanted to 
take off my jacket and throw my apron on the floor. It's really hot in here. <laughs> I'm gonna fry my hair. What kind of pasta did you get off the Cambro pantry? I got fettuccine. Oh, let me tell you. Those are ready for garnishing? Here we go. That's the sound you want to hear. See how the salmon's looking? Damn, that's a powerful oven. I'm way there, baby. Let's give this a flip. Ah, that's perfect. How are you doing over there? Are you looking at my desk? I am, little Miss Sassy Pam. <laughs> So I'm gonna go back to the pantry for a second. What are you getting from the camera pantry I'm now? I'm getting some more arugula because I forgot that I'm gonna put a little fresh arugula on my plate oh. as a garnish. And oops, I need another ramekin. My pasta is ready to be tossed with the pesto. This is looking pretty good. Let's pull that out. I'm going for it. Right. Two of the walnuts. Pull that out. Are you yes, close? I'm, yeah, I'm waiting. I'm scared to death it's overcooked because there's nothing worse than slicing into your flank steak and having it be brown in the middle. Oh yeah. Yay. Pull it off in one piece and put it on the plate. It's lovely. And that's about how much steak I would serve for myself. My parsley. I feel so warm. Ugh. So I'm smashing this down. This is ladies. You have two minutes to go and you're both done. This is a very organized couple of competitors. That's great. Right, now, put your plate down. And, and there's going to be a big reveal here, right? There is going to be a big reveal. All right, go for it. And they think it's so cool, but really, it just was an easy meal to make. All right, and there it is. Well, basically, it's salmon in a bag. Salmon in a bag. All right, and you have pasta. I have pasta. Um, fettuccine with arugula, walnut pesto, flank steak, that looks good. and a, a blue cheese crostini. All right, let's go up to the judges' table and see what they think, what we all think of these two delicious plates of food. Hi there, I'm Clark Wolf, and this is The Kitchen Corner. Today, we're talking about mushrooms. Mushrooms are delicious, they're full of protein and vitamins and minerals, and as a matter of fact, the Roman army went all over the world conquering because they knew what to gather and how to cook it. Uh, today, you can get all kinds of cultivated and wild mushrooms, and there are just a few things you need to know. One is that most mushrooms, uncooked, are lightly toxic to most people. So cook them, throw them in soup, saute them quickly, grill them if you want to. Button, cremini, portobello, it's all the same mushroom, just getting older and bigger and kind of meatier. So that's why a portobello burger is a good thing to eat. If you have mushrooms like these, each one has a characteristic of its own. Each one can be cooked just the right way in terms of how much heat, how fast, when to put the salt on to pull out the juices. But remember that you should always buy mushrooms from people you know and trust, that you should usually keep them refrigerated under a damp uh, paper towel in the fridge, and put them on a pasta, a saute with a little olive oil. You can add some butter, salt, pepper, even lemon, and make it a light dish, or put them on steak and really go to town. For more information, you go to coffeetv.com, but in the meantime, I'm Clark Wolf, and this is The Kitchen Corner. The Kitchen Corner has been brought to you by Trimark Economy Restaurant Fixtures. When you need it now, Trimark Economy has it in stock. Okay, contestants, let's meet the judges. First, we have our very special guest judge, Nancy Oakes, from the wonderful Brasserie Americana, I think of it, as um, uh, we all know, Boulevard. Hello, hello, Clark. And uh, Michael Baker, chef of Lake Chalet on beautiful Lake Merritt, right? Yes. You're not originally from California, are you? I'm from Boston. Originally. All right, so you know all about fish and all, all, all kinds of food. Of course. Here, Linda, why don't you tell us what you cooked? That is a wild coho salmon. Uh, baked in parchment, and that's a tricolor quinoa. It smells good, doesn't it? It does. All right, and uh, Leah, what did you cook for us? I made fettuccine with an arugula walnut pesto, a little sliced flank steak on top, and then finished with a blue cheese crostini because I love the pairing of blue cheese and steak. Right, ladies, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Uh, if you'll excuse us for a few minutes, we're going to taste some food, some of it yours, and do some <laughs> judging. All Enjoy. right, thanks. Enjoy. See you in a bit. Let's dig in. Let's start with the uh, with the wild coho salmon. It's kind of dramatic. Um, and I'm sure that if 
one of you did it, the, the wine wouldn't be quite as prominent. If the wine has too much flavor, then you lose the salmon. And would you do this with salmon or might you do it with halibut? You do it with either. Let's go to the other one before you do the actual judging. I mean, I'm kind of an Italian purist. So serving things on pasta like this is, uh, you know. Upsetting to you? But it's very. Uh, How about it's, near pasta? But it's what Americans love to yeah. eat. Yeah, I thought the same thing. Beef, I mean, it's usually cooked into a ragu for pasta. All right, come on, guys, do some judging. Nancy, tell us what you thought of the salmon on papayote. I think with a few little refinements, I think it's a, a great way to entertain. If people want to eat fish, and it's hard to do fish for yeah. a huge party and get yeah. it cooked yeah. right. Yeah. You're right. This is one way, and you can really protect it. It will become warm to the table. I like that. A little right. reveal, right? A little, a little drama. reveal, a little drama. A little, a little Always drama. good. Mike, you tell us what you think of the uh, salmon. Um, I thought it was good. I thought it could have used a little butter to smooth out the acidic yeah. edge. Yeah, yeah. And now let's talk about the pasta dish. Nancy. I like the way she's uh, beckoned to everybody to pick some food up and maybe have the beef with the blue cheese. But I just love, like what I really want to do is take this piece of meat and put it on this blue cheese See, crouton. I you would make a sandwich. I, this is what I know. Right. Okay, Mike, you're the chef. Tell us what you think of the pasta dish. Um, it's a little upsetting um, to have a rare meat on top of a pasta. And I thought that too until I tasted it. I yeah. thought it really went well together. I may have taken the bread and made coarse breadcrumbs and sprinkled them on top instead. Let's write it up. What do we have? Let me see, let me see. I think we have a decision. Let's bring them back in. What do you think? Done. Ready. Okay. Welcome back, ladies. We have had a wonderful time. The food has been delicious, I must tell you. We really enjoyed it, didn't we? We did. So here's the deal. Chef Mike, tell us what you thought a little bit, the, the greatest hits and maybe the tweaks of the salmon dish. Uh, I thought it was very tasty. Um, I thought the wine was a little strong. It kind of overpowered it for me. Um, a little butter in there probably would have helped smooth that out or perhaps cooking off the wine first. But overall, I thought it was great. Great ingredients. Okay. Good, all right, and Nancy, tell us a little bit about what you thought about the pasta dish, even though you're a purist. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's the Italian purist. Uh, but I love that it's a combination of two of my favorite dishes, you know, the pesto and also tagliata, the sort of the Italian great meat dish with arugula. I thought you seasoned the meat beautifully. So the dish that's going to be on your menu is going to be? Um, the dish I would like to put on my menu is the pasta with steak and arugula pesto. Welcome, congratulations to both of you. Thank you both very much. Come over and meet the judges. I'm excited. I don't win anything. I've never really won anything, so I felt really great, and I felt like all the cooking I've been doing at home really has paid off. If you think you've got a recipe from your family that can compete to end up on the Bay Area restaurant menu of your dreams, upload it now. CoffeeTV.com. Come on, send it in. We're here at the <laughs> Lake Shall I? Today, our featured restaurant is Lake Chalet in Make Larrett, uh, in Make Larrett Oakland. <laughs> All right, how many times a beer? I'm sorry? How many, oh, see, that's good. <laughs> if he can't understand. <laughs> we should have lunch sometime, all of us. We'll get together, it'll be great. Okay, yeah, good. Hey, you were late for work again. <laughs>